All right. <clears throat> this is the board. This is the setup at the time. Absolutely surrounded. Clovis is up first, wielding a hammer and a torch. For his first action, he's going to move in here. For his second action, for his second action, and he gets four actions on a turn. He's leveled up now. I think he's going to try to take out some of these walkers. So rolling two dice. Was that a four? That, was that a four or a five? I think that was a kill. So we got one of these. <clears throat> he goes to eight experience points. So that was his second action. Third action, he will attack again. Five and a three. That's um, <laughs> getting a little reckless here with my equipment. And for his fourth action, he will attack one more time. And he took out this one. So that's two more experience points for him. He's up to 10 now, and he cleared out the room. Kind of went into a berserker frenzy there. And Clovis is done. Let's go to Baldrick next. Um, Baldrick's going to move into this room for one action. And as a free action, as a spellcaster, he's going to use Inferno on the zone with the fatty in it. But I understand he can't just target the fatty. He's going to roll four dice. And he needs fours or higher. He got three hits. That fries the room. So for his free action there, he wiped out the room and gets three experience points, taking him to six. He's nearly about to level up. Okay. So he still has two actions remaining. Well... What he should do is grab an objective so that he can level up. Let's have him move one for his second action. And for his third action, he will pick up this objective. And that gives him five experience points, taking him to 11. Then he gets his bonus extra fourth action. And to do that, he's going to do Inferno here. Don't know if we'll get as lucky this time, but we have fours or higher, so he kills two of them. And now he's at 13 experience points. Not bad. Well, Anne is up next. She has a torch in hand and a sword in the other and a short bow on her back. I don't think we need her to grab the objective token. Who The one we really need to grab that is Silas. He is not leveled up yet. So Anne, using her torch, will do a search. And she's going to search. And she finds Mana Blast. We'll just put that in her backpack for now. 
and she draws a second card and she finds a dagger. Hmm. Gain plus one die when equipped with uh, another melee weapon. So she could mix this with her sword. That might not be a bad com uh, combination for her. Okay. All right. Let's say for her second action, she moves into this room. For a third action, she's going to do a trade. Does she want to do a trade? I don't know. Let me think about this. Trying to set up the dragon bile situation, right? Not exactly sure this is going to work out, but let's go with a third action trade. She's going to take the dragon bile from the dwarf. And he's going to take her torch. For her fourth action, she's going to toss the dragon bile. And it's going to go right here, right out the door into the zone where Nellie is. Oh, splat. It's right there. Uh, she's spent. That's her four actions for the turn. We next go to Samson, who has the torch, but he doesn't want to light that with, um, with Nellie on there. And we want to wait until that abomination gets on there before we do anything like that. So... Let's see. Probably the person... Clovis has a torch. That's good. Clovis does have a torch. He's going to be... Uh, no, he was the first one this turn. Baldrick is the one who's going to need the torch. Because he's going to be the first person in the next turn. So we've got some decisions to make here with Samson. Samson's going to do a search. He's got a torch in his hand. He finds a regular crossbow, which is not nearly as good as his orcish one. And plenty of arrows. I don't really have anybody equipping a bow at this very moment. So hmm, not the greatest thing there. Second action, we're going to move. And for a third action, we're going to trade with Baldrick and give Baldrick a torch. And for his fourth and final action, he's going to shoot his orcish crossbow into the nearby zone. See if we can hit anything in here. Orcish crossbow is two dice, three or better. And that's a five and a six. So that's two kills. Two more experience points, taking him to 13. And that's good. I think we've cleared the building. So just to be clear, when he gave his torch to Baldrick, he re-equipped his short sword just in case he needs that to open any doors. And I don't think we're going to have to deal with that. But you never know. Silas. Silas is next. Silas is the one who really needs to level up. So Silas is here. He's going to move back and pick up this objective as his second action. That takes him to nine experience points, taking him to his first level advancement, getting plus one actions. So now he has two actions remaining. Uh, he will. come back out of that room and the last thing we need to do is get over there to that other objective in the upper section here so he's going to move there and he's done and then nelly nelly's standing there in the goop 
She's got uh, in Mana Blast, she's got Mana Blast equipped and a great sword. But I think the smart thing for her to do is possibly to retreat. So she's got four actions on her turn. Let's, let's see if we can, who would we target here? If she did Mana Blast, it's going to target the Abomination. We can't target those runners. They're hiding behind the Abomination. So that won't work. The Abomination is giving the runners cover, if I understand the rules correctly. So for her first action, she's, she's going to do her best to fight here. Or should she try to move as much as possible? Why don't we move as much as possible since she gets a free move? So free move. Four actions. One, two, three, four. She's up there with the last objective. That's the smart thing to do, I think, to win this scenario. All right, everybody gets to take their turns. Fatty's advance. Necromancer marches walkers advance fatty advances abomination advances runners advance fatty advances runners activate again and run into this room with our characters we need to spawn now the northern spawn spawn one is three walkers the necromancer spawn in the north spawns an activation for the necromancer who advances one space the eastern spawn gets three walkers and then i need to shuffle this deck we've made it all the way through the southern spawn gets two walkers. And there we come to the end of the turn. Let me check for any noise tokens. Um, I'm sure we created some, but we're standing around where all the noise was happening anyway. So I think we're okay. I think that's the end of this turn. I think we're about to win it. All right. Baldrick is our first character to act this turn. And this could be the last turn. He is equipped with Inferno and a torch. He will move into this zone with the runners for his first action. And for his second action, and this should be okay, even though there are runners there, um, he's going to discard the torch at a range of zero to one. That's going to be here, and he's going to set this on fire. And this burns four walkers and the abomination burns it up gaining him five six seven eight nine nine more experience points taking him to 22 wow so he's in the orange now well do you really want to level up in this game <laughs> So that was his second action. So what, what does he get now? So here he is. Uh, plus one free magic action is what happens. But I don't know. This is orange too. So is it a choice? What is spell book? I have to look this up. Oh, I see. He um, he can carry multiple spells. 
and consider any of those spells as equipped if he takes the spell book action. I don't think we're going to need that this game, so let's instead go with the plus one free magical action, which will allow him to cast Inferno more often. All right, for his third action, he's going to turn around and attack one of these runners with his short sword. Four or greater. That's a miss, and he'll do it one more time. And that's a miss. So, uh, still didn't have the greatest dismount, but certainly took out the abomination, which is really just what we needed to do. So, Baldric kind of saved the day there. Let's move on now to Anne. Anne is in the room with the two runners, and she's going to re-equip her dagger as her first action, and then she's going to go dagger and sword. So she'll, she'll be rolling three dice, trying to get fours or higher. And she got a four. That kills one of them. And she gets an experience point, goes to 13. So that was two actions, right? Equip and attack. Third action, she will attack the other runner. And gets a kill. Goes to 14 experience points. So she's got one action remaining, right? Uh, she'll move into this area. And that'll be it for her. All right, I think I could play out the other characters, but I don't know if there is such a need to do this. Samson could skip his turn. Silas could skip his turn. And then it would be to Nelly. And Nelly is up there. We could skip over those two characters. And Nelly could take her turn and grab the last objective token. And that would take her to 17 experience points. And that should clear all the objectives for the game. So I believe we just were successful at finishing quest one. We killed the necromancer very close early in the game. We killed the abomination and we raided the laboratory and collected one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven objective tokens. And that were, that was all that were on the board. So I believe that's a win. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we got all of that and uh, slayed the beast and its master and raided the laboratory. So yeah, count quest one as a victory. Thanks for watching everybody and let me know if you spotted any errors or have any better ideas regarding strategies. Uh, Zombicide Black Plague so far is proving to be a very enjoyable solo game. Uh, the artwork is great, the figures look good, the maps look good, um, and the rules are not too bad. There's some things that are easy to, to look over, you just have to take your time and be careful, I think. But very enjoyable. Thanks for watching everybody, I'll catch you later.